Okay, so in this video, we're going to be talking about plunging cusps. Plunging cusps typically are found on upper second molars, and I find that in my practice, there are lots of patients who could benefit by having these occlusal reductions made on these cusps to lower the amount of bite force or occlusal forces on the opposing teeth. So here you can see an example of a patient who, right before we did a night guard scan, I took a look at this and noticed that this cusp was hanging down more than it should. And so I went ahead and made a reduction. I'll show you that. Here's the after. So now you can see afterwards. Now that cusp, that pointy part of that cusp has been now reduced to now lower the amount of pressure that's on the lower tooth. Actually, let me show you that lower tooth. Um, here it is. Whoops, sorry. Let me get this there. Many of you probably have seen this where you're going to go try to do a filling or a crown and you just realize there's already been quite a bit of uh, occlusal um, reduction just naturally from that plunging cusp from the patient just chewing or maybe grinding on this tooth. And so what you get are these big scooped out areas. Imagine if you were going to have to go do a crown on this tooth and you did not uh, reduce that upper cusp. What would happen is you'd have to reduce more on top of what's already been reduced through the, on, the, on this tooth already. And so you can imagine you're getting closer and closer to the pulp. So by doing an occlusal reduction on that cusp on the upper, now you have more freedom to work uh, within this lower tooth to make it work right. Um, so whenever you're going to be doing a filling, a crown, or a night guard, check for a plunging cusp to make sure that it is not uh, interfering with what your future restorative plans might be. Um, you can tell that this person has it also on the other side. They have uh, the same kind of thing. They've got a plunging cusp on the other side. Uh, if we go to, let's see, this was the after. So there you go. Now you can kind of see the after. Uh, both of those have been reduced. Here's that second molar on the other side, and here it is on the left. And now let's go take a look. If you want to see them, how they come together, how much difference does this make with the occlusion? Let me slide that over. You can tell it's still hitting in there pretty, pretty close. We just got rid of that pointy part, and it might actually still be touching slightly. Well, maybe not that much, but... Um, I'd rather there be a little bit shy of the occlusion. Maybe, maybe there's more occlusion over on this part of the tooth, but on this inner part, I just got rid of that uh, offending piece of enamel, and now this is going to fit better. So uh, hopefully this has been helpful. Now, if you want, here's a little quick commercial for myself. This concept, along with many others, is found on uh, my book, which is on Amazon, the Dentist Training Manual. Uh, you can find it, uh, find it I hopefully, full of all kinds of information to kind of help make these small little things in your clinical processes just work more smoothly. All right, well, thank you for watching, and I'll send the next video soon.